Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Jonna, and I'm going to be the moderator. I'm here with Dr. Edward Stevenson, who's going to be talking to us today about macular degeneration. Um, I wanted to just let you know that there is a, a question uh, section of the webinar that you can type your questions throughout. Uh, Dr. Stevenson will go through some frequently asked questions, but um, should any other questions arise, feel free to type those, um, and I will ask those to him at the end. So um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Dr. Edward Stevenson. Hello, everybody. Hope you're having a good day. Starting to warm up. Get some sunshine again. Um, we're going to talk about macular degeneration today because it is macular degeneration month. So. There we go. All right. Uh, so uh, AMD is kind of how we shrink age-related macular degeneration. Uh, so sometimes we'll be using that term because it's pretty common to call it that. Uh, it is a fairly common issue, uh, especially uh, as the name implies, as you get older, uh, its prevalence becomes higher. Uh, so 11 million people in the country have this. Um, and as the population is uh, continuing to live longer and longer, uh, it's ex estimated that it's going to become, have a bigger disease burden on society. So uh, macular generation, uh, the second piece of it, we just talked about age, the second is the macula, uh, which affects the center of your eye. So this picture here is trying to show what people who have more severe macular generation kind of live with in their life. Uh, so let's kind of dive into that anatomy a bit more. The retina is the thin tissue in the back of your eye. It uh, lines the inside of the eye like wallpaper, and it's analogous to the camera, uh, or in a camera, it would be the uh, film or the sensor in a digital camera. Uh, the very center of the retina that's in the very back uh, is the macula, and that's what's responsible for your central vision, what you use to drive with, read with, look at somebody's faces, the rest of the peripheral retina is used for finding steps, things that you're gonna stumble on, see what's coming up from beside you. Um, macular generation primarily affects the vision in the macula. So there's uh, several stages that you may have heard of. Uh, basically, everybody starts out at dry, uh, with very rare exceptions. Um, Dry macular generation is where the photoreceptors start to not transfer nutrients very well between uh, themselves and the layer of, of cells that kind of nurse the photoreceptors. This creates a buildup in what we call drusen, which are these yellow bumps that you can see in this picture. These are fairly large drusen, uh, some that have coalesced into one very large one in the center, so it's fairly obvious. Um, these can create some minor breakdowns in your vision, often not too noticeable, uh, but you do start, uh, you may have symptoms such as low light vision, difficulty transitioning from white to dark spaces, um, and just having difficulty with contrast. So macular generation can advance into more advanced stages, uh, one of which is called wet. Roughly about 15% of people with macular degeneration will, uh, will advance into wet macular degeneration at some point. Um, those who have larger drusen, more drusen, um, smokers have higher risks of turning wet, uh, but you can go from wet uh, very early. Some people hang out at the dry stage for a very, very long time before you're turning wet, and some people never go wet. Wet implies that there's abnormal blood vessels that are growing from the layer where they normally reside up into a layer of the retina where they shouldn't. These vessels are ab uh, leaky, fragile. They cause bleeding and swelling in the retina, which this picture, again, which is a fairly aggressive bleed, is showing some of that bleeding. And if you could kind of tell the swelling, pigment changes, that white area at the bottom is scarred uh, blood vessels. Um, and the swelling basically starts to rot away at your vision uh, and causes distortion. The other advanced form is called geographic atrophy. This is a, uh, an advanced form of the dry type uh, in which you start to get these kind of cookie cutter holes in your vision. Um, if they affect the center like this one does, you end up with a giant kind of black hole right in the center of your vision. So it is also, um, 
visually destructive, uh, though still dry. So sometimes people say, oh, should, I'd rather have dry, should I rather have wet, or which one's better, which one's worse. It's really hard to kind of classify things in those terms. You can have dry and have very poor vision. Some patients have wet macular degeneration and we're able with treatment to keep them seeing 2020, uh, 2025. Uh, wet macular degeneration often loses vision very rapidly. So if it's not treated, they lose vision. Geographic atrophy is a slower process, um, but it still can be very meaningful as far as vision loss. So uh, some of the symptoms we kind of mentioned um, with the dry part was kind of that lack, lack of low light vision contrast. Difficulty transitioning from light to dark or dark to light. Um, wet macular generation often shows up with central smudge in your vision. Straight lines appear blurry because that swelling is distorting the retina. And so if you look at this grid, what you should see is squares, but someone with wet macular generation might see this kind of hole in the center of their vision with um, this kind of black hole effect going on. Uh, so how do we treat it? Um, the primary treatment is for wet macular degeneration right now, uh, and that's medication that actively treats those abnormal blood vessels and shuts down the swelling and leakage. Uh, laser therapy was the old standard before the medications were developed. Uh, it's still used occasionally today in very specific cases. Uh, the downside to laser is you end up destroying tissue in which you end up losing some vision with the goal of preserving vision down the road. With the medications, uh, most people uh, are able to maintain their vision, and a great majority of people are actually able to improve vision uh, after it turns wet. Uh, and then low vision aids help people. I think we're gonna talk about that a little bit more detail here in a minute. Um, so the medications that are injected, they go by the names. The brand names are Lucentis, Ilea, Avastin, and Bovu. Uh, the generic names are ranibizumab, um, brolizumab, names like that that are hard to pronounce, basically. Um, A-red supplements are a set of vitamins. A-reds was the study. Um, uh, and then there was followed up by the A-reds 2 formula study, in which they found that high doses of antioxidant vitamins, in addition to a, a, a standard multivitamin, reduce the progression of macular degeneration by about 25%. Um, so that's not a lot, but it's what we have. And that's kind of the core treatment for both uh, wet and dry. Uh, we did talk about the, vis uh, the laser. The laser has a special drug called Visudine, which is injected in your uh, through an IV. It's called a cold laser. So that laser only activates the areas where that drug is present. Um, so it is a very targeted treatment like I said, it can cause scarring and you sacrifice some vision in order to prevent greater vision loss down the road. Uh, low vision aids, uh, so this is essentially magnifiers. So that central hole that's in people's vision, what we could try to do optically is make things bigger so that you can see around that hole. Uh, that's anywhere from just a hand magnifier uh, having good lighting is also helpful. So either having a stand magnifier with a light or good lighting in a room uh, is also very helpful. And those come in various styles. Um, telescope systems uh, is what this gentleman is uh, showing us. This is a digital uh, version, one of them, which is called Iris Vision. There's a handful of different brands. Uh, they used to make, or I guess they still do make glasses, which have multiple lenses in them. Uh, and allow you to kind of zoom into space as if you're looking through a binocular. Uh, these digital ones are a little bit easier to use because they're hands-free, they're a little lighter weight. Um, and for some people, it gives them a lot of functionality even with a low, lower vision. Um, but they can also be sometimes difficult to use or adjust to. Um, and then we mentioned your lighting control, getting lights up really bright and consistently uh, really help, help people see what they need to see. So in the end, there is life with macular degeneration. Uh, you never lose all your vision um, from the disease. You still have peripheral vision. You're still functional. Everything just gets a little bit more tedious and um, time consuming. Um, there are some good drugs to treat the wet. We have some research on trying to treat the dry and the geographic atrophy that uh, thus far has not produced 
a, a good usable drug, but there are some some budding uh, treatments on the in the future. So first question, uh, can anyone get age-related macular degeneration? Yes, uh, age increases your risk. So it's commonly seen in patients over 65. Family history is a strong factor. There is several genes that play a role in macular degeneration. Um, and the vast majority of people who have it have some family history of it, though it can present in different severities uh, across families, as well as just individual to individual. Uh, obesity plays some role. There's a little higher prevalence in females, lighter skinned individuals, uh, those with cardiovascular disease, particularly cholesterol disease, uh, and smoking are identifiable risk factors. Uh, the best way to find macular degeneration is uh, getting a regular exam. We're looking for those drusen and changes in your retina. Um, the AMSLR grid is very helpful, primarily detecting wet macular de degeneration. Sometimes you can pick up some dry. Um, so it is something, if you do have it, that we recommend. Uh, it doesn't often pick up new diagnoses very often. Uh, is there a cure? No. Um, there is no cure. And uh, as I mentioned, the drugs for wet macular degeneration are able to reverse some of the vision loss um, and do a good job at uh, stabilizing vision over the long run. Uh, but it is a progressive disease that uh, at some slow rate will get worse over time. Uh, so what can you do? So taking the vitamins, uh, so the AREDS vitamins, which we list out here, vitamin C, E, uh, lutein, zeaxanthine, zinc, and copper. Uh, the copper is really just to counteract some of the side effects of the zinc, which is a pretty high dose of zinc. Um, lutein and zeaxanthine are specific vitamin A subtypes um, that are found to be safer and more effective than the previous version, which used uh, just beta carotene. Um, and those come by several brands. Preservision is a very common one that you may see at the stores. There are several brands out there. Um, that's the most proven effective thing. Um, healthy lifestyle. Uh, so good cardiovascular health is always good for everything, your eyes and everything else in your body. Uh, there's evidence that a Mediterranean diet um, is helpful even above and beyond the AREDS vitamins. The reason they, they chose the AREDS vitamins was that they found that those who consumed a Mediterranean diet had less incidence of macular degeneration. So but the, the tricky thing is what really is a Mediterranean diet? Uh, it's not eating at Olive Garden. Um, it's a diet where, uh, particularly to the island of Crete, where they're using a lot of olive oil, they eat whole grains, so not processed flours, um, uh, but large, you know, the whole lentil, barley, stuff like that. Lean protein is starting to show uh, more and more um, evidence of some impact uh, and that boosting, particularly the branch chain amino acids, um, has some good effect at slowing macular degeneration. It is also something that is very helpful just in general aging because as we age, we don't tend to um, get enough protein and um, don't get it very consistently. And then vegetables. So the heart of a lot of these vitamins are coming from green leafy vegetables um, and those who consume them in their natural state um, do really well. Uh, if you're smoking, it's just one more reason to stop smoking. Um, wearing sunglasses outdoors, certainly um, there's some mixed research as to how much prevention that does. It certainly uh, doesn't hurt to, um, to take a little extra precaution with them. They certainly are helpful for those with macular degeneration and trying to uh, minimize how much vision impacts the fluctuations they have as they're going in and out of buildings uh, and going from bright light to dim light. Okay, let's see what the audience um, has for you today, Dr. Stevenson. I'm going to go ahead and open up the questions. And um, if anybody does have any questions, feel free to go ahead and, and chat them to us now. Um, let's see, what might it mean if I have experiencing several dark circles with the bright white light that resembles sun rays blinking um, and, uh, may cause a tick away in about 30 minutes? It only happens once in a while, but it can be alarming. Um, uh, so these are like 
flashes of light. Uh, flashes of light that go for 30 minutes. Uh, there can be, if it's a consistent pattern, those can be ocular migraines. So your brain is having kind of its own little making up light that you're perceiving. Uh, those classically last for about 30 minutes and are very consistent in nature. Um, if you're having flashing that's more persistent, especially flashes in the dark, they're off to the side, those might be more uh, separation of the jelly inside your eye, uh, which carries a small risk of having a retinal tear or retinal detachment forming. Um, so that's often worth getting checked out. Um, in the setting of macular degeneration, people with um, sometimes wet macular degeneration, that fluid or swelling can cause some little shifting, which can provoke flashes in the photoreceptors. Um, so difficult to give that a very specific answer. Flashes can be several things, really kind of depending on the company they keep. Okay, uh, the next one is, what is the average time to lose your sight if you have macular degeneration? Um, so this is a, it's, it's very individualized. Uh, so uh, patients can have macular degeneration diagnosed for 30, 40 years and have lost a line of vision over that 40 years. So it can be very mild. Um, you could develop geographic atrophy fairly quickly and you could go from uh, good 2020 vision to say 2200 vision, which is kind of the giant E or like what we would consider legal disability vision. Um, over even a couple of years. That would be a very aggressive form of it. In wet macular degeneration, again, it happens very suddenly. Uh, so you could go from having very good vision to waking up with very blurry vision. Um, that is, again, disability level vision, essentially overnight. Uh, and then with treatment, that may, you know, hopefully would get, on average, that gets three or four lines better with treatment. Uh, so we're getting you back to moderate vision, enough that you could kind of read with a magnifier. Um, some people do really well, and we can get them back to where they started vision-wise. Um, some people, we just are trying to prevent it from getting worse from there. So um, uh, it's difficult to average that out. Great, thank you. And then uh, someone's asking how many um, AREDSs to daily should you do you suggest <clears throat> from a, a supplement standpoint so you have to depends on the you, you should follow the box so the a reds formula is a very standardized dosing um and any drug that at least represents themselves as an a reds formula should be giving you that full level of drug for some vitamins that's uh i believe there is a once a day out there most of them are a twice a day vitamin uh, so you need both pills to get the full dose. I have seen two pills twice a day, so four pills in a day dosing. Um, it depends on how big the pill is, if it's a gel cap, a capsule, if it's a chewable, uh, if it's a small pill that you take many of versus a very large pill. Um, so you really have to kind of follow the box label on that. Okay. Uh, this is an interesting question. So can you give me more details on the treatments such as eye drops or injections? I think when, I know when I hear the word injection, it kind of sounds scary and, and I know you do it every day. I'm just, I think it'd be great to elaborate on what really happens with the injections. And then also, um, like when, when is it appropriate to use other treatments? Um, so there are no drops to treat macular degeneration. Um, there is only the injectable medications at this point. Um, uh, what happens is we give a numbing drop on the surface. Uh, that's where most of your nerve endings reside. Uh, we use a dr another drop of betadine, which prevents infection uh, by killing off most of the bacteria around your eye. That can sustain quite a bit, uh, which we can usually give you more numbing drops if needed. Um, and then we try to apply some deeper numbing. Uh, that's either done with, again, some lidocaine, uh, gel or a cotton swab or something that's held up to this the the eyeball for several minutes, or we'll uh, inject some lidocaine just underneath the very surface of the eye um, in that loose kind of clear tissue, and let that lidocaine soak in for several minutes, uh, which most always gives 
pretty 100% deadening of the area that we're injecting. Um, the needles that we use are extremely small. Uh, you look down, because I'm trying to get, it goes into the white part of your eye, just off to the side. Um, so you're looking away, um, you don't see me, usually don't see the needle unless you see me carrying it. Um, and most people don't feel anything with the injection because the numbing stuff has done its job. Um, the numbing stuff obviously stings for a few seconds, so that's the most uncomfortable part. Um, people usually will see kind of a swirling effect because we're shooting fluid inside the eye. Uh, so they get these kind of amoeba-like or swirling patterns that they see briefly. Um, vision often diet dips out for about the first minute or so um, and then kind of comes back around. Uh, most of the people are leaving with vision pretty close to where they came in. Um, the eye, the, the drops we use to prevent infection often leave the eye pretty scratchy and irritated for the day. So it's pretty common to have to kind of go home and nurse the eye a little bit because it just feels a little bit rough. Uh, and that's currently the price we have to pay to prevent an infection from occurring. Um, so uh, yes, it's it's not nearly as bad as everybody imagines it. You're, the first time you think of an injection in your eye, you think you're strapped into some machine and some giant probe is coming at you and you're just going right through the middle of your eye or something. It's not anything like that. Um, so certainly not something you want uh, or would enjoy, but um, they are, they're not difficult to, to do. So, <laughs> To accept, to that, I guess. <laughs> to that point, someone actually gave you a shout out, Dr. Stevenson. They said, thank you for taking care um, of me. Uh, you give the best shots ever. I do think the shots are helpful. And that comes from one of your patients named Terry. So they're on okay. today. So that was really cool. Um, and then that's followed up with um, from somebody else in the audience. How often do you need the shots? Um, so it varies. So the medication, uh, most of the medications are designed to work at about four weeks. Um, uh, the medication itself just degrades over that time. Um, and so we start monthly, um, people start to get good effect. We're able to go longer and longer between injections. Um, and we try to get as much time as we can in between injections as possible. So for some people, we barely can get them to that four week mark. Um, for others, we're able to get them to two to three months in between injections. Uh, and for those who are able to go long enough, we can sometimes pause it. So on average, those who start injections, 80% of them will need injections continuously at some one to three month interval for the rest of their life. Um, for that 20% they've got who can stop injections, they about half of them will be able to continue without injections, at least for a five year period half of those will probably need to restart injections at some point within five years of stopping. Um, some of the newer medications and a lot of the research is trying to uh, create medications that last longer. Uh, so Bovu is one of the first medications that was approved along the lines of trying to treat uh, between two and three months. Um, there are another handful of those medications kind of hitting the market. Um, uh, there's some surgical devices that are being developed, which would be a, you'd have to have a surgery with a little reservoir implanted. Um, and that reservoir, you still need injections about every six months, but that injection would be to refill the reservoir. So you wouldn't actually get an injection in your eye. You'd be getting injection in, into that little rubber thing that is sewn into your eye. Um, and uh, promising results, at least with effectiveness. There's obviously a lot to consider when having to do a a larger surgery to implant a foreign body. Uh, and some of the longer acting drugs have had some issues with inflammation and stuff that um, that we're still working around. But there's, uh, there's a lot of drugs in the pipeline at least. So pretty optimistic that the next 10 years will not need such frequent injections. Okay, and is this an in-office procedure? Uh, yes, we almost, uh, almost always do it in the office. Um, takes about 10 minutes to get you get somebody prepped up and have the injection done and get them back on their way. Okay, and then this is more of a symptomatic question. Someone that has AMD says they were told that they had a wrinkle in their retina. Is that a part of uh, macular degeneration symptoms? Um, the most common 
reason that we would describe something as a wrinkle in the retina uh, would not be directly for macular degeneration. That's a um, uh, what we call an epiretinal membrane. That's a little bit of fibrous tissue that sits on the surface of the eye. Extremely common um, to have at least some form of that, usually a very, very mild state. Um, they can be more common in people who do develop wet macular degeneration because the swelling will induce some of that, uh, that fibrous tissue to form. Um, but right off the bat, I would not make that linkage. Okay, and then there. this is actually the last question that we have for today. Um, do wavy lines indicate wet AMD? Not, uh, not always, but it is um, a worrisome sign. So uh, what we like people to do with their Amsler grid, which is that set of boxes, is to look at it each day, cover an eye. Um, if it goes from seeing straight lines to one day seeing wavy lines, we like to see you ideally within one week's time. Uh, because that may suggest that you have transformed to wet macular degeneration. Uh, some patients can have very large drusen in the dry stage, and it can cause the retina to look um, to be quite bumpy, uh, and that can still give them wavy lines. Um, so it's possible that you could be wavy and still dry, but it's worth being checked out. Perfect. Actually, one more came in. So after the injections, can you drive immediately? Uh, most people can, yes. Um, that obviously depends on what your starting vision is, uh, if we're trying to treat one eye or both eyes. Uh, the legal standard is to have one good driving eye. Um, and so if we're treating the worse eye, which is usually the case, um, you still are of legal driving vision. Uh, some people see well enough, even with their uh, macular degeneration eye that we're treating, that um, that they can see well enough to drive. Uh, sometimes the irritation again makes it difficult because you're blinking a lot and the eye's irritated. Um, so it's always helpful if you have some assistance when driving, um, but uh, certainly is a possibility. Perfect. Well, that was the last question. Um, thank you, Dr. Stevenson. Um, I wanted to let the audience know that we uh, did record the webinar today and we will send out uh, a link so you can uh, watch this or share this with your friends and family member. Um, again, thank you for attending everyone. Um, we hope you have a wonderful weekend. Thank you all.